attributes, tactics, dynamics, all of it helps in getting your players firing at the highest level in your FM saves. But there is something that a lot of people have been ignoring that can take your player from zero to hero, from 10 goal a season to 30 goal of a season. And it's been hidden right under your nose. Some of you may use it. Some of you might use it unconsciously, but not know the full extent of what it can do. And some of you might not use them at all. But I'll stop being so secretive. Let's run the intro and get right into it. Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome to the FM Scout channel and in today's video we'll be talking about an underrated aspect of Football Manager that can make your players OP beasts and it's all about player traits. Now I might say that and it means nothing to some of you. I might say it and some of you roll your eyes and go, well I know player traits exist Jake, why are they so special? Well I was like you not too long ago where I kind of knew player traits were there, I knew the rough effect they were having on my players but I didn't really take too much note of them nor did I know the exact impact that they could have. I started watching a few videos on it. I saw one from FM Stinger, Omega Luke, both of them brilliant YouTubers. Go check them out if you haven't already. And I thought, you know what? Let me dig in to traits a little bit more. And since then, I've been having loads of fun and loads of success with players that you probably wouldn't think otherwise would do very well. Before we get into it all though, if you do enjoy the video, then smash the like button for us to let us know you appreciate the content and subscribe for more like this and drop a comment down below. Your favorite favorite player trait or just what you had for dinner if you want to help us in the YouTube algorithm and you might also see we're in an Aberdeen save here if you want to check that save out it's on my channel linked in the description where we've got a let's play series going at the minute as well as some one-off rebuilds take a breath there we go we're done with all the plugs let's get into it shall we so I'm going to be looking at some of my favorite traits in this video alongside why I think they're so effective now a lot of the time like I say you might see player traits in the game you might ignore them and you might not realize how much of an effect they're having. It really came to light for me in this Aberdeen save where we have a player called Duke. Now Duke is a decent player. I mean he's not very talented to be honest and we use him as an advance forward. If you actually look at him as an advance forward he's quick and he's strong but other than that he's not really very technically gifted and you'll be very shocked to see that he scored pretty much a goal a game last season. Maybe you won't be shocked but he for me is performing way above expectation and I wasn't sure why but what I noticed was that a lot of Duke's goals came from first time shots often outside of the box catching the goalkeeper off guard and they were going in way better than I expected and if you look his long shots are actually better than his finishing. So this trait for him has really helped him and it's taken him to another level but it is by by no means one of my favorite traits. I'm going to talk about some of my favorites and some of the most overpowered ones in FM that can really turn your players into beasts. And the reason I do the little air quotes when I say overpowered is, of course, if you had these traits but had a player playing in a role or a tactical instruction that says do the opposite, for example, if he's got a player trait of shoots from distance but you tell him never shoot, always pass the ball, those two things are going to counteract each other and we're not really going to see much of a representation of this player trait in the in game engine. So, obviously, Obviously, all of these things come into play to make your player overpowered in the game, but these traits, when you get the right ones, can really help turn your player, like I say, from a 10 goal a season striker to potentially a 30 goal a season striker or a midfielder, defender, whatever it might be. We'll look at some of our favorites, but player traits in general, if you didn't know, they usually just increase the likelihood of a certain action happening from your player. Let's say you've got the player trait attempts bicycle kicks. That doesn't mean that no one else can attempt bicycle kicks. It just means your guy will do it with more frequency and if you hover over the player traits you can get a rough idea of what they do for you. As a side note as well once I tell you about these player traits if you decide you want to add them to your players you can do it by going to the development section to training and then on this screen you will see this here discuss new trait. Now from here you can talk to your different coaches who might be able to help the player develop his trait. This is an older version of my save so it doesn't matter too much but let's take Duke for an example. Very quick maybe not the best finisher but, but if we can get him into one on one opportunities he might score more so I'd be asking him to try and beat the offside trap which I imagine is going to be in movement training I'm not too sure but I'm sure it'll be on here somewhere there you go I would like to start coaching Duke to break the offside trap if this is a good or bad idea the coaches will tell you in this case you can see the coach says that makes sense actually let's get Duke training that and after a while he will eventually develop that trait it's currently in green to show we're training it and you can also train players out of traits that you might not want so you can do all of that on top of that if you pick a trait that doesn't really suit 
suit your player. Let's say it was tries killer passes and Duke has eight passing and nine vision. Obviously, that doesn't suit him. Your coaches will tell you it's not a good idea and you can either follow their advice or break away from their advice. But with traits covered now and the effects they can have, let's show you some of my favorites. We'll start off with defenders. You might laugh at me right now, but I'm going to use Harry Maguire as our example here because he has two things I want to focus on, a trait that I don't like with defenders and a trait that I do. Now, the one that I don't like and the one I'd suggest you always try and train out of your players is this one here, dwells on the ball. As you can see, this means it takes a player longer to make decisions on the ball, which often isn't the way you want to be playing football. So I would train that out of the player. Of course, if you're playing different tactical styles, you might want different things. If you've got a target forward in your tactic, you might want someone who plays with their back to goal but you wouldn't want that on a tactic where you've got an advanced forward trying to score from long range passes over the top so obviously there's plenty of these things to think about but in general I don't think dwells on the ball is a good trait but the one that I really do like especially if it suits your player is brings the ball out of defense as you can see this increases the likelihood that a defender will bring the ball through the midfield positions and then either lay off a pass or keep dribbling and running through we saw Harry Maguire do it lots for Leicester before he signed for United and then he does it every every now and then for Man U, but not so much anymore. It really suits those players with good dribbling ability, passing ability, and vision. Your real top draw ball playing centre backs, this will really help them and it will get them moving through the pitch and get your team progressing quicker, which is something that's always great to have. Often you'll see your defenders sitting there waiting for the pass, going sideways. Well, you've got a player like Maguire here. In theory, if you took away the dwells on the ball trait, he would use his initiative and go and push through midfield and see where he goes from there. He also has tries long range passes and I really like that for this kind of player, a player with very good passing ability. Another trait that goes well with a ball playing defender with good dribbling, take our player here, Jean Beso, is runs with the ball often. As you can see, it determines how often they're going to run with the ball. Pretty simple, right? If you've got a player with nice decision making and dribbling, that's really going to help him. And decision making as well, I should cover, is a massive factor in traits because at the end of the day, you might have a player that runs with the ball often, but maybe he's doing that at the wrong times. But having a high decision making attribute will hopefully mean that they do these things at the appropriate at times which can really help your team so yes it's always worth taking note of a player's decision making when you're reviewing their traits but i would definitely suggest you go around your team and you start adding and removing traits from your players that you would like to improve because they have a massive massive influence in game defenders obviously we spoke about a couple of traits but i don't think many of them are massively game changing but there's a few particularly when it comes to central midfielders and strikers that i absolutely love and we're going to look at one of them now we stole this man for Bayern munich in our third season Ayan ibrahimovic and i'm looking to make him a mazala in our side i feel like he has the attributes to do it well and i'm looking to use him in that position to run in late onto attacks and to score so at this point we need to think about how we're going to make that happen yes we can set him as a mazala in our tactic and ask him to shoot more often but one of my favorite favorite traits and one of the more overpowered ones in football manager is this one that I'm about to show you so if we go to training and then discuss new trait it's another one that will be in the movement training if we go to technical it's this one here I would like to start coaching iron to arrive late in the opposition area whenever possible think about Frank Lampard how many goals he got from doing this from central midfield and there's tests out there I saw Omega Luke did this with Thomas Suchek, where he scored, say, five goals one season. He added this trait, didn't change too much else. And then Thomas Suchek went on to score like 20 from midfield. And it's those kind of results that made me start looking into this trait. And it really will get you great results, particularly from Emir Zala on the attack, or maybe a central midfielder on the attack. Maybe it gets to your complete forward, your advanced forward, and they've got no other option. They might then see Arjen Ibrahimovic, in this case, run onto the ball late, pass it off to him, and then he can use his finishing ability to put it in to the back of the net. It's a very effective trait and one of my favorites on midfielders. But if you're looking for someone who's maybe going to sit behind your defense a little bit more and maybe play those killer balls, then there's a brilliant trait that I want you to look out for. I'll see if any of my players have it here. And if not, we'll look for a player that we might be able to train it on. Here you go. Leighton Clarkson is a great example. He's got a bunch of traits and some of them are brilliant, particularly if you've got a deep line playmaker or an advanced playmaker. And one of them is dictates tempo. If you've got the kind of player that you want to dictate the game and that's great to have but it's not one of my favorites my favorites are actually tries long range passes and also one that he doesn't have here Leighton Clarkson is tries killer balls often now if you have a player with great passing ability say passing vision technique and also decision making and you want them to be the one 
playing those final balls through, you will see some great results from this, particularly if you pair those traits that we just discussed with a striker who's being told to run in behind. You can imagine it now. Leighton Clarkson likes to try killer balls often. If he had that, he'd be playing these balls over the top. Our striker would be beating the offside trap, running onto the ball and making it easy for himself to score. So I really, really do love that trait. I think it's one of the most effective in the game. Again, this is all my opinion. So if you feel like I'm missing a really good trait and not speaking about about it do let me know but tries killer balls often and tries long range passes for a player with good passing ability can be so so effective and really overpowered in the game another one of my favorites though if you're looking for a midfielder who's maybe not playing central midfield but possibly defensive midfield is this one comes and gets the ball from deep what this will mean is Leighton Clarkson will drop off between the defenders to claim that ball if you combine that with the killer balls trait you'll often see he'll pick the ball up here run forward a little bit and then instantly play the pass over to one of our strikers it's super effective and outside of the striker traits that I'm about to talk about I think those central midfielder traits can have the biggest effect on your team only strikers seem to top it for me but before we move on to them I guess we should cover our wide players now if you've got someone that you want to cut inside whether it's an inverted winger or an inside forward on the left or right it's always a good idea to have this trait looks to cut inside from whatever wing you want them to cut inside from so Patrick Volomark here is a right-sided player who's very left-footed an inverted winger perfectly suits him and we want him to cut inside from that right hand side so having a trait that makes him do that more often is really going to benefit him in this tactic to playing well another one that I really like that we don't have here if you have someone with good pace and also off the ball work as well as that decision making that we discussed earlier then trying to beat the offside trap can be great for a wide player but possibly even more effective is knocking the ball past an opponent take Timo Werner for example he's got great acceleration and pace and one of his traits is that he likes to knock balls past the opponent so if he does this and knocks it past the opponent he can then sprint onto it using his pace and likely get there before the defender has even turned around and it's a brilliant trait to have obviously you wouldn't want it on your player with one acceleration but on someone who's very quick it can be super effective and one of the best traits you can get for a wide player but now let's move on to my favorite traits the one that for me completely changed the game and it's our striker traits let's use Robert Lewandowski as an example here a brilliant finisher who has some very specific traits now the ones that you might see with a striker is either likes to play shots which is good for players with good finishing ability and technique as well as composure there's also blaster shots which is maybe for someone who doesn't have as much finishing ability and you still want them to score goals there's also this one likes to lob the goalkeeper and another one that you'll often see is likes to round the goalkeeper but the ones for me that are super effective are these two tries to lob the goalkeeper and the other one that i mentioned takes a ball round the goalie you'll see so many goals scored from this and one thing that i and many football manager players have said in the past is that places shots as good as it might seem and as good as it might work with someone like Lewandowski with great finishing and technique it seems like on a lot of occasions it ends up causing the issue of your striker missing they'll run in try and place their shot and the goalkeeper will save it it does not seem to be as effective as lobbing the goalkeeper or rounding the goalkeeper if you've ever had a player with likes to lob the keeper trait on you'll notice the amount of times they get close and just dink it over the goalie it's very effective and one of the most overpowered ways to score in the game so yes I would always say Say, likes to round the goalkeeper is a brilliant trait to have as is the chips the goalkeeper one or lobs the goalkeeper but then you also get onto the traits that are outside of finishing for a striker the movement ones that we spoke about earlier and one of my favorites is likes to beat the offside trap obviously this means if you've got a pacey striker who makes good decisions they'll beat the offside trap have a clear run on goal and create a one-on-one -on -one opportunity but this is where we get into where traits can be super overpowered because let's bring it back to what we spoke about earlier imagine you've got a midfielder and you've trained him to have tries killer balls often he might then be able to spot your striker who has also got the trait of trying to beat the offside trap he'll see him make the run he'll try his killer ball it will go to your striker he's through on goal one-on-one -on -one. you've also got the trait of rounding the goalkeeper or lobbing the goalkeeper and it will really help that player score more goals I promise you that even the one that we spoke about earlier arriving late into the box for a midfielder that you want to score goals it's so so powerful in the in-game engine combine that with a nice tactic and a good set of attributes and you've got a player who will be deadly but as much as it is great to add traits onto players make sure you're also taking away traits that you don't want 
Take our player Darnell Fisher here. This guy is extremely aggressive and also likes to dive into tackles. That doesn't mean that he's going to actually make loads of bad tackles. It just means he's there to tackle more often. Combine that with his aggression and it's led to this that you can see on screen here. Not only is he injured, but he's banned from pretty much every competition right now, including, by the way, the FA Cup in England. And he hasn't even been at Middlesbrough for a couple of years and he's still suspended. So it goes to show you how some of these traits can really affect your players. And if you can, you can always try to train these traits out of someone you go to that same trait section that we mentioned before and you can ask to try and remove the trait from the player sometimes though particularly with older players those traits can be ingrained in a player and it might not be easy to get rid of it potentially even impossible however on the other end of the spectrum if you get a young player coming through your academy it could be a good idea to get them traits on him as early as possible so when he does eventually make that move into your first team he'll have all of his negative traits gone you'll have trained him to have the traits you want and you will see some great results so always try and take notes of these player traits it can really take your players from zero to hero as mentioned can make them so much more overpowered in the in-game engine if you have enjoyed this video make sure you smash the like button for us and let us know down below your favorite player trait subscribe for more content like this and if you like the look of this Aberdeen save come check it out on my channel linked in the description but most of all everyone have a great day and I'll see you next time good luck in FM and hopefully some of these traits can help you out in your save